So imagine that. It turns out we've been talking about climate change and doing climate change since the founding of our country. But we've been doing it with almost no understanding of the ecology of the Western Hemisphere. As a result, all of those deep climate regulating and healthy microbiome diverse soils that made America the breadbasket and sugar and tobacco and cotton and beef king of the world for so long were completely depleted, leading to the tragic dust bowl of the dirty 30s that in turn led to the replacement of true soil with mere dirt laden with fossil fuel derived NPK fertilizers and pesticides reliant on fossil consuming tractors and farm machinery. After destroying the carbon holding life supporting native environments, the people who came from the east tried to put the ecology of the west on life support, but ultimately just prolonged the suffering of a dying patient whose carbon and methane and nitrogen gasps contribute over 10.5% of global warming emissions. Agriculture and forestry today provide little of the rapid carbon cycling and none of the sequestration that American soils and forests and coastal littoral zones had contributed to the previous cornucopian balance that Lewis and Clark had witnessed. And don't even get me started on the obsession with the American lawn, particularly in the arid parts of the West. Ecologically, for the purpose of this course, the West is considered to be that hemisphere west of Greenwich, England meridian, the zero degrees longitude line, wrapping around to the anti-meridian at 180 degrees longitude, which puts us in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The prime meridian famously passes through Greenwich, England, hence the concept of Greenwich Mean Time, as well as France and Spain and Europe and Algeria, Mali, Burkina Faso, Tongo and Ghana and Africa before finally crossing Antarctica. The anti-meridian mostly passes through the open waters of the Pacific Ocean, but passes across land in Russia, Fiji, and Antarctica. This means that from a technical standpoint, the land masses of ecological interest comprise only the westernmost chunks of Ireland, England, France, and Spain, and a few countries on the west coast of Africa, all of Greenland and Iceland, and of course, all of North and South America and the Caribbean. And that is the ecological west that we are dealing with in these modules. So because we've organized this course along the literal lines of spatial geography, we don't want to confuse you with what has been called Western civilization, most of which is located east of the prime meridian, and given its shared cultural characteristics, it really is more of a northern hemisphere phenomenon. In fact, as we mentioned in the lectures on the north, both ecology and culture really seem to owe more to latitudinal similarities and differences than longitudinal, except where that wonderful warm ocean gulf stream has naturally changed the climate to make it more pleasant for Europeans. Remember that with regards to climate, quote, for every 100 meter rise in altitude, the temperature decreases by about one degree Celsius, end quote. And according to the NIH, quote, outside the tropics, average annual temperature declines on average 0.7 degrees Celsius for each degree of latitude in the northern hemisphere and on average 0.5 degrees Celsius for each degree of latitude in the southern hemisphere, end quote. The technical reason for this is because the sun hits the earth at an angle and thus when it hits northern or southern hemispheres, it has to pass through more air before hitting the ground and therefore disperses much of its heat over a wider area. Whereas over the tropics, where the sun's rays are perpendicular to the ground, they pass through much less air. Remember, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And in the tropics, the sun is more or less straight overhead. Rotate the Earth along the meridians of longitude, and of course it does absolutely nothing to affect those, the length of those rays. For this reason, the ecologies of the Western Hemisphere and the Eastern Hemisphere, even though separated by massive oceans, are remarkably similar. So similar, in fact, that even when organisms in those environments come from completely different ancestral stock, they have experienced what we call convergent evolution. Take as a great example the cactus family of the West, native to Central America and then the spiny members of the Euphorbia family of Africa and India in the East. Many people can't tell them apart, but they are completely unrelated. It's simply that they adapted to similar climatological conditions on different sides of the Earth. The same is true of North American and Northern European otters and bison and bears and deer. Look at the convergence between lions in East Africa and mountain lions in Western Colorado. 
witness the similarities between the Circopithecidae, the Old World monkeys, and the New World monkeys, Calatricidae, Cebidae, Iotidae, Pithecidae, and Atelidae. And most extreme of all, look at the marsupials of Australia and the mammals of South America, two lambs down under, with completely different origins, converging on adaptive ecological strategies.